football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mikey A. God bless football, Stugatz. Thank you, Mikey A. Mike Golick is going to join us along with Brian Kelly. Uh, we can't have one without the other, meaning Brian Kelly will only come on if Golick is a part of the proceeding. So he will join. <laughs> what, Billy? What happened? Well, I've, we've had Golick without Brian Kelly numerous times. Oh, but... we can get Golick whenever we want. It's Kelly. He's the problem. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, he's going to join us. Uh, we're looking forward to that. What's the matter? What happened? Do, do many shows start by teasing a guest and then immediately saying he's the problem? Like <laughs> calling your guest that you're trying to tease and have people stick around for a problem before they've even come on? It was unfair of me. Brian Kelly is a great guy. Okay. I hung out with him at Lake Tahoe a couple of years ago when he was playing golf out there for the tournament. Uh, he and Golick have a great relationship. The reality is we can only get Brian Kelly on the show if Golick is on with us. It's not a problem. It's just their friendship. That's all. So who, that's fair, Billy. That was fair know? criticism. Yeah. Who would you say is the person that we will most definitely never get on again if your relationship with Golick sours? Andy Reid. Like who? Mm. Yeah. 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 Marcus yeah. Freeman. Definitely Marcus Freeman. And that's right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might never get him anyway. <laughs> Do we want him? Uh, well, <laughs> that was unfair. We caused him a, ba a lot of God bless football bad luck. It. Yeah, we caused him a lot of bad God bless football luck. I don't have his number. I would love to have Frank on. Uh, you know, Frank's got nothing going on. I mean, actually, I'm certain someone signed Frank as a coordinator. I'm almost positive someone signed Frank Reich as an offensive coordinator. It could be wrong, though. But uh, anyway, Brian Kelly, the LSU head coach, will join us. Uh, Mike Golick will join us. The draft is coming up in a couple of weeks. Billy, we had yeah. a debut last week of a great game, and I am told that we are going to play that game again, and I'm very excited for it. <laughs> yep, coming up later today, we have another edition of Mm-hmm or Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Billy, we have a problem. Me and Mikey A, we really have a problem. Uh, we think our team is good. This is the earliest I've ever thought the Jets are good. And I need someone to tell me they're going to be bad. I really yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not going to do it? <laughs> well, I don't want to tip my hand, but that may be uh, maybe a little something to that. In, uh, mm -hmm or mm -mm. Not to say we can't talk about the Jets, but. Why do you why do you think the Jets are going to be good? Because the Bills have gotten worse and the Dolphins have, you know, not gotten that much better. So I think it's a combination of the Patriots are not good. The Bills have gotten worse, uh, although there's still time left with the draft and and whatever remains of this uh, of this free agency period. And the Dolphins, they haven't signed Tua yet. They've lost some guys on defense. I just and the Jets have a really good roster. So if Aaron Rodgers is healthy. Uh, they have a good defense. They've kind of shirt up the offensive line. Uh, they're expected to take Bowers, the tight end from Georgia, in the draft. Uh, it seems like the Jets don't have a hole in their team, okay? Like, they have all the bases covered with the exception of can the 40-year-old recover from an Achilles injury and have a good year at quarterback? That's about it. There, you know? yeah. there is an argument to make that if the Jets roster were to stay healthy, and it won't, like, let's just get that out of the way. It won't stay healthy. Well, no one's will. Right. Yeah. But if they were to stay healthy, it's 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 a top three or four roster on paper. Right. On paper. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for the Jets, they have to go out on a field and play football games. Yeah. Well, on a, a terrible on a field. field. And MetLife, exactly field. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, on a, a field that gets every slab <laughs> that gets everyone injured. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Billy hates that field. <laughs> I mean, I just like there's fields that like injure players at an alarming rate that should be looked into. And they're like, nah. but the World yeah, Cup's coming. Fine. So let's <laughs> let's change the field for the World Cup. That'll be fine. Yeah. Um, when is the World Cup coming, by the way? 26. Really? <laughs> Billy, you threw it out there. I was just trying to give the audience some information. <laughs> it's in the summer. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's uh, save that for God bless football. I'm yeah. sorry. My bad. My bad. I got him confused. <laughs> I did. Uh, Billy, uh, I have some bad news for you. Oh, no. Um, and I'm putting you in a bad spot. But we'll never get OJ on with K Funk and Mojo and. 
OJ has passed away, Billy. Yeah, that was probably the strangest way to deliver that news. You could. Well, I know how badly you wanted OJ on, and we kept asking Metal Arc and the folks at Metal Arc. They weren't really into us having OJ on for a fantasy segment or gambling advice. And now we'll never get OJ. That's true. Yes, OJ has mm-hmm. passed. Yeah, complicated legacy for OJ Simpson. Uh, I will say having this: OJ on is mm-mm. got it. Yeah, I will say this, uh, since we're a football show, from a football standpoint, O.J. Simpson was one of the greatest football players uh, to ever play. And what happened uh, yesterday is very complicated to deal with. Um, In my opinion, I'm not certain it's a life that should be celebrated. Uh, In fact, I will say it's probably not a life that should be celebrated. Uh, But I will say that he is one of the greatest football players to ever play. And as a young kid growing up, uh, watching the NFL, he was one of the guys that sucked me in because his athleticism and his ability on the field was mesmerizing. He was one of the all-time greats. So uh, I think at the very least, what we can say and should say are condolences to his family, to his daughters, to his kids, uh, because everything that happened with OJ after his playing career uh, and before, for that matter, had absolutely nothing to do with them. And so they're grieving uh, the death of their father. Uh, And we can leave it right there. We will never have O.J. Simpson on God Bless Football. Anyway, with that said, Billy, do we want to play the game here? Can we play the game? game. I have a top five as well, if you'd like it. I know that was clunky. It was a clunky way for us to get to it. But uh, I felt like on a football show, we should at least say something about O.J. Simpson. All right. So you want to play mm mm-hmm or mm mm-mm? I do. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the first one. Aaron Rodgers recently appeared on the I Can Fly podcast, and he said he initially thought his career was over. Quote, I was really thinking this is it. You don't come back from this injury, Rodgers said during an interview. I had this incredible offseason experience in a new city and a new town and new teammates, a new organization, and an owner for the first time. And I and was really falling back in love with the game that I first fell in love with when I was five years old. And it was absolutely beautiful and special and deep and rich and yummy and just incredible. Aaron Rodgers leading the Jets on a yummy playoff run. Mm Mm-hmm or mm -mm. mm-mm. Oh, God. I don't know what to do. (laughs) I want to say mm mm-mm. But I feel like. Yummy playoff run. Yeah. A yummy playoff run. Mm Mm-hmm. A delicious mm -mm. playoff run. Mm-hmm. What is a playoff run? Is it getting to the AFC Championship game? Is that a playoff run? Hmm. Because that means if you win the division, that means you just have to win a game to get to the AFC Championship game, and that would be yummy. I mean, why don't we say one playoff win? Would one playoff win be yummy enough for you guys? Mm-mm. Wow. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ooh. Mm-mm. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. No. Two playoff I've, wins. I've, I've suffered. No, I've suffered for too long to be satisfied with one playoff win. Wait, hold on. So now he's asking a question, Mikey. A two playoff wins. Now that depends. Are they a wild card team or have they won the division? Because two playoff wins puts us in the Super Bowl. Yummy. Up to us. Well, right. no, that's only if they have. No, <laughs> no, there's only one team that gets a bye. <laughs> Well, that's true. You're right about that. Uh, do we get the bye? No, we don't get the bye. The Chiefs probably get the bye. The Ravens. Well, might hold get on the a bye. second. In this scenario, okay, hold on. In this scenario, you win two playoff games and you make it to the AFC Championship at the very least. Right. Still not yummy. Hmm. 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 Wow. <laughs> He didn't want to do it. (laughs) That tasted bad. Mm -hmm. It does. So we'll take the we'll take the AFC Championship game because we haven't really experienced AFC Championship games too many times in our lifetime. We had it two years back to back years with Sanchez, ninety seven against the Broncos. We had it back in the eighties, I think, when Shula soaked the field down at the Orange Bowl. He cheated, is what Don Shula did. The Dolphins Mm -hmm. went on to win that game. So yes, we will take an AFC Championship game, Mike. We can't get that greedy. Come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-mm, well, hold on. Mm-mm. No, to clarify, to clarify, if you don't have a bye, you will accept the AFC Championship game. If you have a bye, you have to win the AFC Championship. If the Jets have the one seed, they better go to the Super Bowl. Yes. Wow. They won't get the one seed. But if they have it, they better go to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
We have lofty expectations, Billy. It's why I'm asking someone to talk me no, and Mikey I, off the no, ledge here. We're just owed. We're just owed it, okay? <laughs> owed. We're owed. We're owed after 13 years of watching them not make the playoffs. For them to get the one seed, yes, we're owed the Super Bowl. And the guy we're relying on to deliver what it is that we are owed, because I agree with you, is Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not a bad person to rely on. Yeah, not a great person either. So, I mean, <laughs> if he's healthy, All right, you he's ready? great. Yes. Ready for another one? Oh, of course. The Eagles and the Packers will play week one of the NFL season on a Friday night in Brazil. We're going to get the traditional season opener with the defending Super Bowl champions on Thursday night. This will just be an extra Friday game week one. and It'll be the first time since 1970 that the NFL has played a Friday night game in week one. Mm Mm-hmm or mm mm-mm to Friday night football week one from Brazil. Hmm. Mikey, uh, I mean, Eagles home game. Is it, it's an Eagles it home hot? game. Yeah. Oh, geez. Is it, is, is it like summer hot in, in Sao Paulo in like late August, early September? Because if it is, no, thank you. Mm-mm. Well, you're not going to be there. Yeah. What well, do you care? Yeah, but... I'm going. Uh huh. Because here's oh, yeah. what I love. Give me a fr- well, hold on a second. Football? Wait, he's sure. confusing me, things. Wait, 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 what wait, do you wait, care wait, about the wait. weather? Like, you're going to Brazil. Wait, oh, I mean, Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me not just flatly say you're not going to be there. What if we told them we wanted to go cover this game in Brazil? Like, we don't, like, keep mm-hmm. opening night. People will be covering that. Send us to Brazil to cover the Eagles and the Packers, which is a good game, by the way. Yes, it's a great game. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh-huh. Send mm-hmm. us to Brazil. I'm in. I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to go to Brazil? <laughs> yeah, you know. Now, do we get home in time for the Sunday slate of football? Because I need to be home in time for that, you know? Let me tell you something. If I'm going to Brazil, I'm not going to Brazil for a day, okay? Like, that's just <laughs> how that's going to work. I know, but Mike, so yeah, like, we, I can't miss opening weekend. It's like the Super Bowl. It's better than the Super Bowl. Friend, the, the world exists with satellites and such that you can watch all these games still. That's, You'll be fine. That's fair. I've got the Dead and Company in Mexico <laughs> watch playoff games right in my room. Yeah. So you're right. <laughs> you're right about that. Uh, mm-hmm, for me, I love opening weekend. You get a Thursday night game. You get a Friday night game. You get all day Sunday. You get a Sunday night game and a Monday game. I'm good with that. And Saturday is college football because it's already begun. Well, I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know? Week two yeah. or week one because college has that weird week zero situation. I think college starts one that. week before the NFL. So yeah, week one of the NFL the season, I think you week. get week one. <laughs> You're right. College zero, please. Week Enough. zero, please. <laughs> it's week one. Just everybody right. takes week one off. It's fine. We get it, college. <laughs> so double mm-hmms for us. All right. Well, depending on the weather for Mikey, apparently. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what? All right, our final one for this week. Bill Belichick has been spending the offseason participating in coaching clinics. He visited the University of Washington and also participated in a clinic in Nebraska. On Pro Football Talk this week, Mike Florio and our friend Chris Sims suggested that Bill Belichick should go around on a coaching clinic tour and charge large sums of money to allow coaches to pick his brain. Florio said owners should pay Bill Belichick seven figures to share his ideas on the new kickoff rule. The idea that Bill Belichick would be a consultant for a hire, jumping from team to team, charging seven figures to teach all of them the exact same thoughts he has on the kicking rule. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. <laughs> I have some news on Belichick in a second here. I do. Uh, it's not, it's not, you know. He's joining us to talk about lacrosse again or well, well, well listen, you'll find out in a second here. But Mikey, uh, mm-hmm or oh uh, mm-hmm. Sure, let him do it. Go yeah. make that money. As mm-hmm. long as he's going to get some advice on how to pick players. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm with I'm with Mikey. Go make the money. Go scare the daylights out of coaches. Just your presence scares them, right? Uh, so it's a big mm-hmm for me. I also have uh, top five coaches that have the most Bill Belichick on them in April. Oh wow! Bill Belichick is code for pressure. <laughs> I mean, you want to do that? that in the last? You want to do that in the last segment of the show? Keep some people hanging around. Yes, and I will also tease the fact that I do. I actually do have Bill Belichick news about where he'll be this upcoming weekend. Wow, Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Is I am right off the bat going to apologize for the other guys that are going to be asking you questions here. See, this is the the trouble with being associated with Mikey A and Billy and Stu what? is they use my name to get the big-time named coaches and players oh. out there, oh. 
And then I come on and I have to, I do this to you. I do. I apologize to Andy Reid right off the bat <laughs> because they will say something or ask you something stupid. And I would just appreciate it if you wouldn't clump me in with them. Mm. I, listen, I, I have to do reporters a, a, all the time. So well, I'm used to yeah. this. That's a good point. That is a good point. We'll try and behave, oh. Coach. We promise. Yeah. We'll try. Yeah, yes. yeah. You, you, you'll try. <laughs> so first off, before we go forward with this team, I mean, it is something we're used to with LSU, even before you got there, and certainly while you're there, the athletes that you get, you're going to have three players, Jaden Daniels and Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors, in the first round. So just to talk about those guys for a moment and the talent level on that team as as it keeps turning over year after year. Well, there's, you know, obviously you just turn the film on, you know, those are, those are easy guys to watch, right? I, I don't know that it takes very long to, you know, say these are, you know, first round draft picks. Um, you know, Daniel's year was, was Heisman trophy worthy. Um, his ability to take over a game, um, you know, in my 33 years, I, I don't know that I've had the quarterback that just can change the complexion of the game so quickly, whether he threw it or, or ran it. Neighbors is explosive, uh, whether he's down the field or catching it. Um, and after the catch, his explosiveness and, and just an ultra competitive player. And then Brian Thomas, a guy that can stretch the field, has length uh, and really elusive after the catch. So these are three legitimate first round draft picks that can change the look of any NFL franchise. So, um, you know, my only regret is that that we didn't have a defense that could meet, you know, the talent level uh, that we had on offense. Yeah, I want to get into the defense. I know you have a new defensive coordinator. But also, listen, you've been doing this coaching thing a long time, and you've seen the changes along the way, and, and the changes now with the portal and NIL. The one thing I wonder about, I'm looking at it at Notre Dame as well. Notre Dame had Sam Artman last year and Riley Leonard this year. You, I remember watching Jaden Daniels as a true freshman at ASU and now transferring and going and playing for you. Where are we in the, I don't know if the word can be used anymore, development of a quarterback through a system because a lot of times they develop and they leave or as you try and develop someone, you get in an older player coming in from another school to take over the program. So how do you balance that? Well, it's it's the million-dollar question as to how you deal with, you know, transfers, generally speaking, you know, within your program. And, and you know, the way we're going to construct our, our program here is that we have great talent in the state of Louisiana, and they want to play at the flagship university at LSU. So, the best way to do it is to recruit the state of Louisiana, engage the players, build relationships, develop them here so you can retain them. And so that's the best way to handle it and 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 get them to water the grass here and make it greener here so it's not greener somewhere else. And so uh, that's the only way that I can figure this thing out um, so you're not in and out of the transfer portal each and every year. So develop your own players, develop the quarterback. Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be our starter. He's been here since a freshman. And last year, um, you know, he had a great game in the SEC West Championship game. He could have been in the transfer portal and maybe one of the most desired players, and he stayed. And, and so I think that that's a signal that, you know, there are still some of those guys. He's a quarterback's son, you know, um, and and he knows the game, and he's going to get an opportunity now to run this football team. So that's how we're going to handle it. I think some others are going to you know go through free agency every year, <laughs> um, but that's how we're going to handle it. Uh, Coach, I'm wondering, just going back to your players who are going to be drafted this year, uh, what do you say to them? How do you prepare them for what they're about to embark on in terms of the draft and the NFL? Well, you know, that's a great question. And, you know, what I have seen this year, uh, more so than any other year, because of the transparency that's out there relative to social media, there's so many experts. Look, there's more misinformation and disinformation about <laughs> players than 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 the Cold War. I mean, it, it's crazy. And so I've just told our players, listen, talk about yourself. You know, stay in the moment, um, you know, and and really be humble about having an opportunity uh, to be in the NFL and 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 really keep it that simple. Uh, other than that, 
um, you know, for me, your, your tape is going to show a lot. And then, you know, your one-on-one -on -one interviews, uh, how you handle yourself, you know, be respectful. I mean, all the things that a parent would tell their son, and you know, uh, I, I think if, if you do those things, you can't step in it. And, and I, I think that sometimes we make this more complicated than it really needs to be. Boy, I could not agree more. And you got surefire guys in the three we mentioned. I know they're trying to make some stuff out about Malik Neighbors now, but it's this is lying season. It's when everything comes oh. out. It's crazy <laughs> to listen to so much. But how about th these guys are a given where they're going to go, but how about the player that comes to you as a coach? They get a draft grade, and maybe it's not as high as they want, but they still think about leaving – that's got to be a more interesting conversation, right? Because obviously you would probably like them back on your team, but it's also a chance to go to the NFL. How do you weigh that of where their grade is and what they should do? Yeah, so it's a great question. Like, And, and we try to you know, be, again, um, as, as helpful as we can. I, I bring in Scott Pioli, um, who's a former GM, who, who does a – uh, a full grading uh, of all of our players that are draft eligible. So they have a third party evaluation for them. We bring in former players and tell them, listen, just, just so you know, this is really hard. If, if you're a fifth rounder or a fourth rounder, you got to go take somebody's job <laughs> and, and they may have a family and they're feeding their kids. It's not easy. Um, and, and so just understanding all of those dynamics and, and then what does the money look like? After you, you know, move into an apartment in New York City, maybe, and uh, you start to pay taxes and your 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 players' dues, um, it's maybe a little bit better if you stay here. So I think we just try to give them all the information, and and that the NFL is not a developmental league. It, it's, <laughs> it's you better be ready to play. Um, so and and sometimes that works, Mike, and sometimes it doesn't, and so we can't just. You know, we want to give them as much information and 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 give it all to them so they can make an informed decision. But after that, then support them the best we can. And sometimes that fourth rounder may make more money going back to school than going. That's in crazy, the draft. Mike. That is crazy. Where kids will have that decision to make: should I stay in yeah. college because I'm making more a year, or go to the NFL? It is wild, and, and yeah. I guess I guess that's the next question for you in the evolution of coaching from what it was to what it is now. How much does this feel like professional sports now than collegiate sports with having the amount, the number that you need to know, what can you pay a guy when you go sit in someone's living room? Now it's how much before, you know, taking care of my kid, there's money involved and how much has this changed to like more of a pro level situation? Well, if we had a salary cap, I'd be okay with it. But there's, there's no yeah. salary cap. I yeah. mean, that's that's the issue, really. I mean, if we all were operating under, you know, the same guidelines, at least we could, you know, know, okay, this is what we've got. But that's really the biggest issue. But look, the parallels, you're right. I mean, look, Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, they're all looking for that rookie signing bonus. You know, we're out there recruiting seniors in high school. They're looking for that freshman signing bonus. Yeah. Uh, the transfer portal, he's looking for a free agent bonus. And then the guys on your roster, they want retention bonuses. So, look, the, it parallels. NIL money is broken down into the three categories that the NFL is paying out. And we're we're doing the same thing. Unfortunately, we're doing without a salary cap. And that's where it, where it makes it just absolutely crazy because you just don't know, you know, what the numbers are from, from year to year. So, you know, college football is in a great place. We know there's a lot of money. The problem is nobody knows what this is going to look like in a right. couple of years. And and if anybody does, please let me know. Um, it, but we just have to figure out how to cap this so so we can move forward. Yeah, uh, agreed. The, the game isn't hurt. The game is still as popular as it ever was, but everything around it uh, is getting a little bit crazy. It's actually these players somewhat have it better than the NFL. They don't have to deal with you know, a number of years on a contract. They can do it year by year. It's uh, They're a free agent every year. It's it, it's pretty wild. As far as your team now, you know, as you, you just a little bit of spring ball left uh, in this. As we mentioned, you get a new D coordinator and Blake Baker and guys that he has brought in. So that's an area that was of concern. So, and as we mentioned, you get top athletes there. How will Blake now kind of dissect this defense into, into performing better this year? 
Yeah, we're, we're still in, in need of, of recruiting. Um, you know, I think LSU has always been known for, you know, having great defensive players. Um, we're, we're still in the need um, of, of developing and recruiting on the defensive side of the ball. I think we're going to be very good again on, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, but but that has flipped and, and there's not a balance within the program right now where we have the same kind of players. I think we're going to get there in, in, in short order. Um, but I think we're, you know, from a recruiting cycle, uh, we need to do another really good job this year and next uh, recruiting on the defensive side of the ball. I think Blake and the staff that we've assembled will do that. Um, I think the sum will be greater than any one of the parts on, on this football team. I think it'll be a much more balanced team than it was last year. As you know, we were the top offense in the country, but defensively we were not very good. And so I think we'll have a more balanced football team that can compete in the SEC, but uh, we're, we're still needing to recruit on the defensive side of the ball. Coach, we saw Coach Saban step away this offseason, and one of the things that he said was, that him and his wife discussed and they were like, what are, what are we doing anymore? A lot of the players are just in it for the money. They don't seem to have the passion. I guess as NIL and the transfer portal become more of a thing, one, does it change the way you feel about coaching at all? And two, does it change the way you recruit? Does, do you go in and look at a guy and say, you know what, this is someone that's coming here but may not be here in another year. Let me go after someone else. Yeah, I think if I if if I did, um, I probably would retire as well. <laughs> I, I, I would, and, uh, quite honestly. Look, this is my thirty third year, and 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 my why is player development and and developing players and the relationships with players. And I can tell a parent, look, I I can help develop your your son be a better husband, a better father, um, a better technically and tactically i can develop him as a football player uh, i can help him graduate i don't know what he's worth i, I don't know, i don't know what that number is I, I can't give you that i don't know what that is i i i've got 33 years of doing it but i don't know what he's worth but i, I can do all those other things for him and and so when it gets down to it from that perspective um if, if it gets to where I can't just develop kids and, and do it in the manner that I've talked about, where we recruit freshmen and develop them, then, then I'm, I don't know if I'll go to West Palm beach, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be on a beach too. Yeah. I was going to say the, the younger coaches are kind of used to this guys who have been around a while and you said it until they get some more guardrails mm -hmm. of where this is going to go. This has got to be tough for guys that have had to cross over into this. So one, one kind of outside the box here a little bit, you were coaching at, at Grand Valley state at central Michigan, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, now at LSU, different food pro things down there. What, what food have you grown accustomed to <laughs> outside of, I hope some beignets. Always thinking with your stomach. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, you got to have beignets. Uh, you know, I think for me, originally from Massachusetts, uh, I always loved seafood, and then you know you end up in the Midwest, and you know the seafood is, is <laughs> paltry at best, right? <laughs> Unless you like, you know, freshwater, you know, uh, fish. But uh, getting getting that flavor back, you know, with with the Gulf here has been awesome. Uh, any kind of uh, Fish with etouffee uh, is is terrific. Um, the food here is is pretty simple. It's just all in the sauces to kind of make it a little bit more of a flair. Um, but it's it's been great. Um, we we really love it. They love football. They love family. Um, Baton Rouge is about as Catholic as South Bend. Uh, yeah. it's, it's it's amazing. Uh, so it's it's been really a, a great transition, um, and um, the food is amazing. So um, I, I'm I have to work out even harder uh, to <laughs> keep the weight off. Uh, Golick, have you sent Coach Kelly any alcohol? Because, uh, mm. well, Coach, are you interested in some alcohol branded by the Golick family? Like, would oh, you... yeah. Our, I didn't our... even know he was it. He's so <laughs> diversified now. It would be, you know, we, uh, it's amazing. We just started the uh, with our Golick family foundation getting involved with uh, a sipping cream. So you, you never know where this is going to go. He looks Coach. interested, I mean, Mike. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, 
I'm I'm up for listen. I'm Irish, so you know I do have that. that <laughs> there you go. It's good and it's good for you, and it's good for me and my family, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> uh, the foundation, Mike. Listen, the foundation. You, know, you can always have it with a couple of dogs on the back on a golf cart. It's it's it all works. Uh, How's your golf game? Is uh, golf game still going on down there? Yeah, this pesky day job kind of gets in the way of it. <laughs> Are you going to Tahoe this summer, Coach? No, I, I, you know, it's it's much more about for me now with with the way things are and recruiting. You're here all June. Uh, July now needs to be you got to chill. And and so um, recruiting now, you you, you got to use the whole month of June with with official visits. So it's so crazy. I, you just need to recharge the battery in July. So going going back to the recruiting, like the early signing period, and I believe in December, and then the normal signing period, should that change? Or there, there's talk of that possibly changing. Do you think that is something that could help? I, I don't want to move the signing day up to June because then I think what you're going to see, Mike, is is kids opting out of their senior year. I, I, I don't want to see that. I will. I, I want to see a kid play his senior year of high school football. And, and you know, he gets an ankle injury, and now he's out six weeks because he's already got a scholarship, you know, yep. admitted to a particular school. So I'm a little leery of that June signing period. And then, you know, for me, let's – I think we're in a pretty good position right now with with where it is. Um, and And let them have the early signing period in December, and then we'll figure it out from there. Uh, a couple of quick ones, and we'll get you out of here, Coach. Uh, who wins the Masters this weekend? You know, I'm going off the board a little bit. I, I think if if he just would go with one swing thought, I'm going with Victor Hovland. Uh, he's been kind of messing around with like 19 <laughs> different swing thoughts, but he can kill this course. And if it, he's got some patience in him, if he's patient, I, I think he's got a chance to win. Have you golfed there? I'm sure I have. have. I've been you fortunate have. enough to uh, to play uh, a little bit uh, at, at Augusta. So Next, if I were, I've never played there. If I were to play there, you, Mike. Would, would would it be frowned upon if I had a beer and a cigar in mm. my hand at all times? Is that frowned upon there? Well, let's just put it this way. Uh, it'd be the last time you played there. Oh. <laughs> you want to take me instead, coach? I mean, what do you think? Absolutely. I'd take the whole group. We, we'd make oh. it a foursome. Coach, <laughs> I, are you serious? No. Uh, no, no, he's not. I'm not <laughs> taking you anywhere, <laughs> no. Stu. What, what do you mean, Mike? I've been on good behavior here. What are uh, you talking about? Yeah, and it's killing you. I know. Those have questions. Yeah. Nolik, help me <laughs> out. Uh, the eclipse, Coach. How'd you spend it? <laughs> it was cloudy here, and 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 I said that. My wife goes, well, that's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> You're missing the point. She, she just talked it up, chalked it up to me being a dumb football coach. And I said, well, I would... <laughs> I was in the office, so I missed it. All right, dumb football coach who plays Augusta. I mean, geez. <laughs> yeah, it works. Uh, where do you think, Jaden? I know you're going to say number one overall, but um, assuming that doesn't happen, Washington, New England, what do you think the best fit for Jaden is? You know, I, I really believe that both of the, you know, I mean, it, it seems as though Chicago's made a decision. That's right. just my opinion. I don't yeah. know. I don't have any firsthand information, but, but I think, Either one of those are a great fit. I think Washington and New England are both, you know, great, great landing spots for him. Um, and, and and again, look, you know, Drake May is a great quarterback. But I, I think Jaden has that ability to change the complexion of a game. He's a veteran guy. He's he's experienced. He's been in the SEC. He's he's really, I think, ready to go in and play. Um, I, I, I think – you know, if you're pushing me on this, I think he goes too. Yeah, I, I think he goes too as well. And while there are no perfect players out there, we see his upside. What do you think are one or two things that he needs to get better at, at the next level? Well, I think more than anything else, the continued maturation in the pocket. He's made great progress there. Uh, I just think, you know, being in the pocket for him is one of those things where you don't want um, to see somebody – um, just all of a sudden I've arrived. I think just more presence in the pocket. Um, you know, everybody can, can benefit from being more calm and collected in the pocket, but he made great progress in year two. Uh, I would continue to see that same kind of progress. He's up to 200 and, you know, 10 pounds. 10 pounds I think. Yeah. Continue to build a, a, a coat of armor on him because he's going to get hit. Uh, I think sliding would be a good thing. Learning yes. how to do that. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, that would also benefit him, but I think he's in a really good position. I think he knows all those things. Which made you more nervous, coaching uh, before a national championship game or stepping up to the first tee for the first time at Augusta? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> it's, it's even crazy that those two rival each I other. I know. Yeah. That you're thinking um, about it. Yes. <laughs> the problem is, in pregame, I saw the other team that we were playing against. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always, it's a, it's a, a great nervousness, you know, when you're playing in a game, a game of football, it's, it's a, it's a nervousness that you've been waiting for, right? It's a, it's the anticipation, right? right? Yeah. That you prepared your team and you're going to go out. <laughs> Augusta, you go out there and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen here. You know, that's a different kind of uh, feeling. Um, so that one, you, you, you just want to get it in the fairway and, and get walking. Did you, did you, did you, <laughs> your, your first drive there, did you put it in the fairway? I think I did. Um, there, you know, the bunker is reachable for, for many of the hacks like me that they put the tees. So I've, I've been out of that bunker on one, uh, on the right, uh, a few times, but, uh, it's, you know, the great thing about Augusta for all of us, you know, that are, you know, higher handicaps, it, it is very generous fairways. So for, for guys like us, it's not as intimidating off the tee right. because they're so generous, the fairways. It's the green complexes. It's when you get up there and you're on the wrong part of the green, you got no chance of three-putting. <laughs> No chance of three party. Uh, oh. that, that's the difference. Right. Mike, you notice he said a few times, huh? You notice that? Yeah, listen, I, that would be it for me, the greens. I did the greens at Pinehurst. It just it for, makes you want to throw your putter. I mean, yes. you 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 get there and think you're going to have a good. Mike, score. you did that at Tahoe. I mean, <laughs> I know I did. I didn't want to bring that up either. Leave me, leave me alone. Let's let the man go. He's got football. All right, coach, get right. out of here. We look forward to our round at Augusta with you. We appreciate the <laughs> offer. <laughs> good luck to your kids coming up in the draft, and good luck this season. Of course, hopefully, we'll speak to you before that. Good seeing you. Listen, now that I learned that you can't have a beer and a cigar, you don't my go? God. Okay, well, I'll take your place. So here's here's what we know. Kelly is like a member there, okay? I mean, he lives in that first tee. <laughs> he lives on the fairway uh, in that bunker, Mike. So maybe you make a call to Kelly. Mm -hmm. Kelly makes a call to Augusta. Me and Kelly go play Augusta with my dad. What do you think? Wow, that would be nice. And oh, you, that would be nice. And you, of course. Well, I had a, I, I have a question. What if... What if it's down to Mike and your dad to make this happen. So the only way I'm going... Yeah, it's you. Brian right. Kelly's the one inviting you. So it's Brian Kelly. But and Brian, he's, Brian, but Brian has a friend so who's going to be there. Well, he has a member. You have to have a member. So the mem right. a member has to be there. He's he's a member. So it's Ke he's a member. So it's Kelly, a member, and then Kelly says... Well, two. Two. And I have to choose between Golic... And your dad. You better take your dad, or I'll club you with a seven. But iron. if he takes his dad, then he may be out of this. Mike. Well, the better way to do it is if Kelly says to me, "I only got room for two, uh, and I want Golik to be one of them." You're asking me because I've always promised my dad the first time I play that course, it's not going to be with Brian Kelly or Mike Golik. It's going to be with you. Yeah. And so what Billy is doing is pushing me into a corner here where he's making me choose, go against my word to my dad, and I would do it. I would play with Golik. I would think. I would the way I would do it. It would be Brian Kelly, the member he's with, and then it would be in the, would be me and Stu's dad. Wow, that would be the force. I like that. Huh? Stu would be out. How about this, two guys? Done. Would you would you give up? How your about my spot? dad and Gojo? Would you give up your spot <laughs> so that your dad could golf with Golik and Brian Kelly? Oh hell no! Oh, I'm joking. Wow. Yes, of course I would. Get out of yes, here. Yes, he would. <laughs> what I would ask would. Mike to do is, hey, hey, Brian, you know what? Set us up with the uh, with a member and take a day off. Me, Mr. Gotts, and, uh, and Stu Gotts are going to go, okay? That's, that's I mean, what people got to have fun there, right? I mean, we're no. hacks playing no, there. No, I mean, no, no. I, I, it would bum me out if everybody was so serious there and not realizing, you know what? We're not on the tour. We're not going to be shooting 70. You know, so what? What? Why can't we go out and enjoy it and have a little bit of fun? Because it's a custom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No fun allowed. Got my issues with some of those people at Augusta. So <laughs> my, the worst thing about the Mike, tournament to me, it, we're trying to get in there. Yeah, Mike, come on. <laughs> I, I know we are, okay, but the, the worst thing about is is the fact that U.S. Open, you you see, I mean, eighty hours of it. 
yes. right? Masters, you don't. Right. That that's what I don't like. I wish we would see more of it. You get it their way, you don't get it. That's, that's I know, it's exactly right. And they're in a position to be able to do that. And I've always said if you have the power and the leverage, you know, use it. Use it to your advantage. It's so not a place for you. Rules, no oh. beers, no cigars. Well, like he said, I, I could play there once, right? So I'd get that one time in and say I experienced it. But would you make it 18 before they're like, Mr. Golick, uh, listen, we're going to have to get you Well, I, I mean, listen, I, I'm I'm not an ass. I mean, I'm not going to chunk it and, li- and not fill my divots, and I'm not going to walk all over the green. I know how to play golf, but – I'd like to enjoy a beer. I mean, I, I they got to serve some you know, drinks out there. No, I mean, I, I, mean went, you know, I, I went to the Masters with my dad a couple of years ago. I had 15 beers. They have beer there, Mike. You'll be fine. So, I mean, if you're playing, though. So, if you're playing, they got to, right? I don't yes. know if they have, you know, the, the cart going around selling stuff. I don't know how it works there. <laughs> but, I mean, you got to be able to have a beer. And if you're going to have a beer, why not have a cigar? It's not like I'm going to be screaming my ass off and yelling four and hitting into people. I know I know how to play the game respectfully. Right. But I like to play the game a little buzz. Is that is that wrong? Uh, is listen, that wrong? I'll be getting high as a kite if we can make it happen. I, mean, <laughs> I, saw, I saw the other day, I was watching a video how they removed the weeds from from the grass at Augusta. I'll replace it. They, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, how about the sand? The sand isn't even like real sand. I saw a story on that the other day. It's it's ridiculous how that place is manicured. It's just, it's beautiful. It's very cool. I would feel bad of how I may hack up that course, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm imagining me, you, Brian Kelly, in a golf cart. It's a great question, by the way. I don't know if they have a cart that comes around like most golf yeah. courses. In fact, if I had yeah. to guess, I would guess no. But me, you, and Kelly in a couple of golf carts cutting it up, and I just rip out a big fatty. I mean, oh, oh, man. I, you, would, you, would probably, you would probably be on, on a time thing there before somebody <laughs> came out and uh, said something to you. So we'll see. I did get, Stu, I did get invited back to Tahoe, so I am Ooh, going back very there. Very nice, and, and and I'm going to try and be the. I'm obviously I'm not never going to be in contention there. I want to be the most improved golfer from year to year. Excellent. So that that that's my goal this year. Do we have a date with me caddying again, or what do you think? God, I hope not. You were you were just horrible. Listen, you, you wanted me to use you wanted me to use a putter off the tee box. <laughs> I mean, the driver wasn't working that day. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, now granted, when you offered that, I did not drive the ball well, but I mm. think that was your fault in getting in my head, right. acting, acting like I should use the putter. Right. Mm. I'm supposed to be helping you out. It's on me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys think you're going to see Travis Kelsey there this year? It's a great question. I think he may have graduated from the Good Tahoe you, tournament. Well, he, he, listen, he was phenomenal the, the night before. Uh, his dad was there as well. I got to talk with him for a little bit. But they do a, a karaoke uh, thing, and they whatever person wants to go up and karaoke. And he was phenomenal uh, doing that. But it's uh, a good so, question by Billy, Mike, because – Travis might be too big of a celebrity now to show. It's going to be funny if Mahomes is, he, is there without I mean, Kelsey. <laughs> the, I, I don't know if he's too big a celebrity. I mean, I get who he's dating, but these are some monster. I'm not including myself in this, obviously. These are monster celebrities that that look to go to this thing year after year. So I'm going to say he's not too big of a celebrity for for that himself. No, you're right. Timberlake's there. Him. Miles Teller is wait, there. Who, wait, who's he dating? Who's he dating? Oh, God. Well, she's Jesus. not going to be there, no. I assure you of that. She is not going to be there. No, but I will Unless tell you Unless she this, enjoys Tahoe. Who I, knows? I think Mike is right, though. Travis has told me on several... Now, life has changed for Travis in a big, big way, yep. but he has told me in years past that that event, like, it is the number one thing yep. on his calendar. <laughs> he looks forward to that more than anything on his calendar. Yeah. More than football. That thing's the guy that The guy that caddied for me, who actually lives in Arizona some of the year, and I've been golfing a lot with him... He 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 has told me because he's caddied there for years. He has said guys that have like placed in the top five are worried the next year they're not going to get the invite back. They said everybody just <laughs> waits and hopes they get that invite. Right. And God forbid something. I am literally going to plan any surgery I have of of repl- of of joint replacement, shoulder or knee around this tournament, so I can make sure I'm available if I get invited. Because someone like me. If I get invited, keep getting invited. Like this is year two. Thank God, I was I was sweating that out. Right. But if I keep and I say, you know what, I can't go because of this or that. That's don't it. do it, Mike. Yeah. I, I, don't I, do I, it. I won't get invited again. No, keep going back until they tell you until they kick you yes. out, Mike. All yes, right. it's exactly. I don't know how many I got in. This may be the last one for all I know. 
but I'm going. I wasn't aware of top five guys like worried about being invited back. Yes. Right. He said it would be amazing. These I know there's a top like, five what? guy that no one wants invited back. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I'll say the name. Tony Romo. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look at you. He takes it Look too serious. You. He takes it too seriously. He does. It's not Augusta. Well, I mean, I got to believe, you know, most of Love those guys that are up near the top certainly take it a little more serious uh, than, than some of us, some of uh, uh, the rest of us, because, you know, they're actually playing for something. They play the game a lot more. I just, I felt bad last year. I forgot who, who was Steph playing in the, in the last round and somebody yelled. Oh, no, it was throat. Marty Fish. Someone yelled with Marty, Marty Fish, Fish in his backswing. He was about to win it. Yelled, yes. That was horrible. That, I mean, that was, that was absolutely horrible. Because Marty's one of those guys who takes that thing very, very seriously. Like yes. he's training year round for that thing. Yeah. Yep, yeah. And, that, and you know, yeah. those people there, obviously they think everybody is on the tour and they all are, are funneling the fairway and we're all, because again, that was my biggest fear is hitting someone. And I remember Aaron Rodgers and Barkley telling me, don't worry. These people all line up there. They don't move. So they get hit. They get hit. That's the way it goes. It's it's unreal. You try and tell them to back up, and they don't want to back up. Now, a lot of it's alcohol-induced. And well, now, you, ball, now you're realizing cool. why Augusta doesn't allow alcohol on the mm. course. Mike. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Ah, well. God bless golf. God bless golf. <laughs> and football, I guess. And we're back. So, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah. The mm-hmm. entire time that we had Golik and Brian Kelly on, yeah, I was thinking about the Belichick news. I don't know why we tease news uh, essentially like 30 minutes. And mm. also, <laughs> I was, was trying so to bad. put together your list of uh, of coaches, the Belichick coaches. It's top five coaches that have the most Bill Belichick on them in April. And Bill That's Belichick it. is code for pressure. Yeah. Which one Got do you it. want first here, Billy? Do you want the news or do you want... I think we do the top five first. Okay, sure. All right. Just keep teasing that news, okay? <laughs> All right. I mean, I suspect I know the answer to the news, if I if I, if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll let you guess uh, when I'm done with the top five. Uh, Mike EA loved that I asked you a question, then answered my own question. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I saw it on your face. I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, top five coaches who have the most Bill Belichick on them in April. You guys ready? Okay, sure. Number five, Robert Sala. <laughs> Look at that. Stop acting like a little kid around the quarterback. Just stop doing it, okay? Act like an adult because Bill Belichick doesn't care who his quarterback is. He tried to run Tom Brady out of town in New England four years before he should have. So Bill Belichick is not going to let Aaron Rodgers run that organization. Robert Sala is. If that continues, Jets get off to a bad start. Sala out, Belichick in. How about that? Mm, Okay. Number four, Matt Eberflus. All the pieces are in place. NFC team. Belichick has said, I think he he would prefer to go to the NFC over the AFC. I don't know why he said it, but he said it. I'm not even certain he did say it. But all the pieces are in place for that Bears team. And if Eberflus gets off to a bad start, Eberflus out, Belichick in. Number three, Nick Sirianni. Loose lips sink ships. And the Eagles got a lot of loose lips. And you know who hates a sinking ship? A man who loves the Navy, Bill Belichick. He doesn't want ships to sink. He wants ships to sail. Okay. What, Billy? What am I doing? You're Nothing. making I'm just, just keep I'm going. Taking it all in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Belichick, if God forbid, if I'm Belichick, I would attend every single Eagles game this year and sit in the stands and let people cheer your name. If Bel- if Sirianni gets off to a bad start, Sirianni out, Belichick in. Number two, Sean McDermott. Just go to number one. We don't need the Number one, okay. Brian Dayball, because we all know Belichick would love to end his career with the New York Giants. We all know yes. that. Yes, everyone knows that. Okay. Everybody knows that. All right, you have 30 Common seconds knowledge. to break your news here. Can so I give Billy- you my guess? Yeah, go ahead. He's going to be at whatever lacrosse game you're going to be at. Boom! How'd you know? <laughs> no, he's suppo- feeling. Get him he's on the su- show. He's supposed to be at the lacrosse game that I am going to this weekend, and I will do everything I can to make sure Bill Belichick is on God Bless Football next week. Picking games. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That's, Every week. That's gonna work. <laughs> Talking lacrosse. God Bless Football. <laughs> 